I'm Jessica Jeffries. I'm a casting director and first AD for motion capture. In video games, everything's kept so top secret. I was given limited information in regards to the game itself and the characters that I was needing to cast. What's interesting is I come at it from a very specific character description, whereas the director and producers, etc., they all have a voice in their head from the voice actors that have already done the character performance. So once I take that character description, I then look to finding the best actors possible for the job. And action! With casting, especially for this particular game, we needed actors that are very good at taking direction, good at thinking on their feet, good at accepting things that aren't a norm. For example, suddenly switching time periods and then embodying a completely different character, whether that's human or anything else. We also needed actors that were physically aware. So when we needed the more challenging physical aspects for the characters, we need people that are switched on and could use their imagination because they've got no sets, no environments here. I'm not winding around seats, I'll get killed. This is suicide. With motion capture, what's really interesting is that you don't always get a lot of information to begin with. So a lot of it you learn on set in the moment. We have three characters each and each of those are from different time periods. So it's just really important to be focused and really alive and in the moment and you kind of take what you can with what the producers and directors tell you about the characters and then you've just got to jump in and, and give it all you've got. Usually you would follow the storyline and know where you're coming from, where you're going to, but in this, if they were to give you a script, it would be 2,000 pages long because it branches so much depending on what the player does and in which direction they take you. It's too complex to try and think out thought by thought, so you just point and shoot, basically. And action. We read the script, so we have a general idea of what we've got, and then they play the previs, which is on the big screen at the back, you get a sense of the environment, and then they mark out things on the stage as well. So you've got to manoeuvre yourself through these obstacles that aren't really there. Each day is completely different. You walk in, it's sort of, and now today you're running from a monster in the woods, and go. So you just have to run away from a monster in the woods and just be at the mercy of the direction and just trust that they know exactly the data that they've got so that they can make the performance from the base that you give them. Daniel, you OK? Say something. It's quite different to traditional acting because it's more about being spontaneous in the moment. So it's familiarising yourself with the relationship between the characters and the backstory and where they've just come from into the scene. And then when they feed you the lines, just improving the scene, what feels most real to the moment then and there. There are definitely similarities between my 1970s character and my modern day character. Tanya was definitely a little bit of a stroppy teenager vibe to her and that is brought into my main Taylor character because we, we do want to channel some of that character into the main one and it's making sure that we pick the bits out that we want to keep then also give Taylor a strength as well so she's not just running around being stroppy and moody all the time it's that idea that she has a strong character behind her and yes she needs a bit of encouragement but ensuring that she's got that strength and that courage behind her just to kind of get her through these horrendous ordeals. I've treated it as though each character is the same and that I trust that the direction will lead them to be different people because I just play what I play and then when they're in that environment they will respond accordingly to that environment and I want to try and keep like a thread between the characters so that there's like a through line there. So if I focus on that then it'll be apparent when they're in all the different timelines which one they're in and what they're doing and stuff like that. Action! It's about physicality. It's the thing that I keep saying through my head is like when I'm running like John, it's like fat by running, so I'm just kind of starting to hunch myself over a bit and a bit heavier on my feet. Because I'm playing mostly John, that's the big thing that I've got to keep in my mind is that he's a big heavy guy and he's much older, a lot less mobile than I am. There was a bit we shot when I was running a lot and I was halfway through, I thought, my God, I'm just running like me. You know, and I had to sort of like stop and start again and find a certain particular run for John. Get to the church, run! Place must have been a grocery store or something. 
Is it safe? Think so. The performance capture in here is very different to how you'd work traditionally in that you're more aware of the fact that there are many hands in your performance. So if I'm on stage, I know that I'm in control of that performance in its entirety. I completely own that performance. I'm responsible for what my character does on stage that night. Whereas here, I know that I'm only responsible for a part of that, and that's quite freeing, actually. So I can work toward a character and give as much good data as possible, because I know that there are animators in there, there are designers in there that are all contributing toward it. Comparing motion capture with traditional acting, they are worlds apart, but also similar in the sense that you just hark back to your training. Everything that I learned to actor training, I bring onto the volume. Even though I haven't got the set or the props to help me out, it's all within the imagination. And that's something that an actor needs to be able to just tap into as and when they can. Obviously with traditional acting, you've got more of a script, you've got a bit more of a hint as to where your character is going or who your character is. Whereas the freedom that you get with motion capture is you can layer that up yourself as well. You have access to the direction, the producer for a long period of time. So you're able to build your character into something that's really sustainable for the whole game. No! No! Let me go! I have to save her! It's quite tricky playing no cap, especially with this where the physical performance is separate to the voice performance. You're often hearing the dialogue or reading the dialogue for the very first time and then you have to do it straight away so there's not a lot of time to let the thought settle, you have to be quite quick with it. And then often the way the actor will perform the line may be different to how you would first interpret it, so you have to make sure that your physical response works with the vocal performance. As soon as you're working in horror, you need an exceptional level of imagination from an actor. So our actors need to be able to portray a real intensity. They need to be able to use breath and subtle elements of their performance to portray an intensity that we're at within that story. It's slightly different because you don't have the props and the set and that can get you into that mode and that feeling so if you do a horror movie then you are apprehensive because you're not sure when that actor's going to pop out and there's smoke screen and the set helps you with the feeling of it whereas this you do have to completely go back to your imagination and imagine how scared you are that you don't know that monster's going to come out from the grate and grab you. My favourite scenes are to be honest the action scenes. It's kind of what I live for. I've trained in martial arts for many years so this sort of thing is totally up my street so when it's a bit more of a challenge try to embrace it as much as possible. My favourite scene so far has been pushed out of a window because you get it to fall. You know, there's like a big like three metre platform and you get pushed off and fall on into a squishy mat, which makes me very happy. Anthony! Up here! What the fuck are you doing up there? The stuntmen are great because they make everything look effortless and make sure that you do it correctly. If we were doing it, we'd probably just go full hell for leather and hit someone around the head and pull out your shoulder, but they teach you how to pick everything up and the proper way to swing to make sure you do it correctly. Portraying the traumatic scenes is difficult because the scenes aren't always chronological, so you go into a scene of that level of emotional state and energy and you have to click into gear straight away without necessarily the build-up. But usually you just have to respond to the other actors in the scene and it tends to be that they give you enough that you can believe you're in the scenario and truthfully respond. And then on the other side of it, there's some scenes where it's just so tiring where we don't stop running and we do about 10 takes of the same scene. So by the end of it, you're having to do it as if you're doing it for the first time, but really you're just knackered as a performer. Three, two, one, go. The thing I found most difficult is learning how helpful I can be for an animator and kind of go, well, I've been given lots of freedom in terms of performance and what I do but there are a set of rules that aren't present here that will really, really help our animators. And it's trying to keep those in mind while you're performing. We have to go, oh, I have to remember the last take I did this, which was two months ago, I think my hands were in this position. Because you haven't necessarily got the references to go back and look at them. It's like being a kid again. It is a chance to play and pretend. Very rarely have I ever been asked to be like the Witchfinder General or a bus driver or all these different roles that you get to play in one week. It's just phenomenal. We get to roll around the floor and pretend to be demons and it's great. 
Come on, you fucker! Motion capture is the most fun job you can do as an actor because it's playing. It's what we did when we were children. You're not restricted by sets. You're not restricted by lighting setups and loads of continuity and props people around you like in film. You are just able to play and use your imagination to put yourself in the correct environment. Yes, God. I keep saying it's loads of fun, but it is the most fun I've had with my clothes on for years. It's great. <laughs> What is your name, sir? Um, Andrew. Well, here we are on set of Little Hope, part of the Dark Pictures anthology. Tell me about the characters you play in the game. Yeah, it's very exciting. I play uh, Andrew, who is a student on this trip to the town of Little Hope. I also play Anthony and I play Abraham, all existing at different time periods and in different places. What drew you to the role? What drew you to this game? I think for me, what drew me to it was the fact that at the core of it was a focus on authenticity as far as the performance was concerned. Hey, Andrew, buddy, how you doing? Where are we? What happened? Yeah, the bus crashed. We're okay, though, just shaken up. Wait, I don't remember anything. Who are you? Something that the okay. team behind this project communicated to me from early on was a need to make the relationship between the different characters and their individual arcs feel truly authentic and have us all interact with each other in a very naturalistic way, in a way that would serve the story and, and make all the horror and the dramatic elements feel real. And that really excited me as an actor. I'd also never done any motion capture performance work or anything really like this before. So it was a new challenge too, and it's been really, really fun. Now, it's not only do you have these different characters and these different accents, you also have this complex, branching story because as the player plays through this game, they can take it any way they want. How is that challenging for you to kind of navigate that as well? It's fun, you know, because I think having a little bit of experience in, in movies where ordinarily you just played one outcome and you're responsible for a single path through a, a storyline, getting the opportunity to play different options and commit to a number of different decisions as opposed to just one it has been really enjoyable to see what your character might have done in a number of different ways and what he might not do in a number of different ways has been really cool. It's been fun to play all the different outcomes and see all those different narrative strands intertwine. Yeah, because up until now you've been playing characters that the path has kind of been decided, the one path, and now it's your chance to really go whichever way with it. Right, 100%. Yeah. Any other things that you, you've drawn on, any other roles that you've actually drawn on going into this? I'm not sure, you know, I'm not particularly experienced in the, in the horror genre at all, much less, of course, in, in, in the gaming world. But the nice thing about this is, you know, as I said, there's been a real emphasis on authenticity and just playing the reality of the situation. I think there haven't been any corny or contrived nods towards the horror genre. It's been about playing the reality of real people thrust into a, a very scary environment and just reacting naturally to it. And if anything, the dialogue has been designed to deconstruct anything that seems contrived or too thematic. And that's been really cool. And, and often that provides uh, opportunity for humor too. I want everyone to stay real close. No stragglers. You want to put us on a kid's line? Okay, okay, I'm coming. Yeah, you're talking about the story and how it's really, you know, genuine and because there's some basis a little bit in, in history and the, the Salem witch trials. Were you familiar with that story going into the game? Not so much, to be honest with you, but that's been really interesting. Laced within the story is some really, really interesting information about the Salem Witch Trials and about the history of that area. And with John, you were afforded the opportunity to learn about this because he is a professor and he does have a organic knowledge of these things. You got an explanation for what we saw? Nothing that makes sense. I do know there were witch trials in Little Hope around the same time as Salem. He's able to feed us tidbits that help us contextualize some of the stuff we're coming to contact with. Yeah, you walk away learning a whole bunch of new stuff and... There you go. It's an education across the board for me, this, this job. I'm like learning how to, how to do all sorts. Any favorite scenes that you've, that you've worked on so far? I felt for you because you did come on an incredibly intense day. It's a lot of... Just screaming and... and uh, screaming and dying. You came on the screaming and dying day. There has been, you know, a lot of fun had on this set too. I think as an antidote to the intense nature of some of the material and the amount of horror and gore and death, we have found it important to kind of laugh and joke around with each other too. 
and a lot of the banter and the conversation that exists amongst the students and, and John, the professor, is kind of quite humorous. Angela, played by Ellen, is a hilarious character and she regularly keeps us all laughing. It's serious, James! You're drunk! What a surprise! And that's meant that the project as a whole is really well balanced. Of course, there's authentic drama and there's a genuine sense of dread and horror, but there's also some really funny dialogue and there's been a chance to play the comedy too, which I've enjoyed. That looks bad. I hope Taylor is okay. Taylor will be just fine. Girl has a knack for getting out of trouble. I know Taylor can be demanding, selfish, quarrelsome, and small-minded, but other than that, she's a real baby. I'm just gonna say it. This is exactly what goes down in horror movies. I gotta ask, is it interesting for you to see kind of how the scenes play out from the other characters' perspectives? Because you're shooting a certain scene and a certain ending or a certain piece in your story, but then at the same time, the other characters shooting theirs. Is it must be really interesting to kind of see how other people take that. Yeah, for sure. It has been. It has been. And I think it's one of those things I like. Look. Oh, she made her death sound so much better than my death. Oh, 100%. <laughs> oh, that that's constant for me. I, I don't want to go off to Ellen. I was like, let's start. Yeah, we all joke about that. She's got the most incredible scream ever. And so anytime there's some screaming and Ellen's up first, it feels like following Pavarotti on stage afterwards. It's like, do we have to really? Um, and no matter how many times I do it, I won't, I won't reach those heights. What are you excited for players to experience with this game? Any advice maybe you have for players of how they should you know, navigate these waters? I think have fun with all the different alternative paths and die again, try again. That's one of the really fun things about this game in particular is that there are so many different pathways that you can explore. And there's a real sense of mystery, and I think it does require genuine effort and endeavor to discover the clues and decode the broader conundrum that the game offers up. Come and check this out. What on earth is that? Not a clue. Who do you think is going to be the favorite character in this game? I think yeah. Ellen's character, Angela. Really? Yeah. She's just awesome, and she puts everyone right in their place. Hey, Daniel, you guys! I am not a guy? How are you two doing down there? This, this little detour is ruining my clothes! That's the headline here? Really? John, played by Alex, the professor, I think likes to think of himself as the leader, and Angela as a character is just brilliant at putting him in his place and keeping the young'uns all in check, and she's super funny, and I've loved watching that character come to life. Yeah. Well, I thought we'd, uh, we'd end with some rapid-fire questions uh, okay. to cover some things that we have not covered yet. So, uh, all right, first up, are you easily scared? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I wanted to lie, but mm, yes. What scares you? I'm still one of those people that like if it's dark and it's oh. silent in a house and I'm the only one around, I just like to turn a few lights on. I'm that kind of person. You don't know what's there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen a ghost or experienced anything supernatural? And I haven't. My last name's Polter, Poltergeist. I grew up with a lot of ghost gags, but that's really as close as I've come. Never actually experienced anything supernatural. Lived I've lived it. <laughs> I've lived as a ghost. Uh, a witch or a, a demon? I'm gonna go with witch, I think. Demons are just legitimately evil. And as we discuss in the game, all witches were innocent. So I'm gonna go with, okay. with witches. All right. Uh, 1900s or 1600s? Ooh, uh, 1900s. I feel like there were more amenities in the 1900s. I <laughs> a few more home comforts. You know, yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Would you rather be chased by a demon or accused uh, by a witch hunter? I mean, I feel like there's really no winning that. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're chased by a witch hunter, there really is no winning that. There was actually no way out of that and a lot of the trials they used to put women accused of being witches through ended up in death or death. So really, there's no way out of it. So at least there's an opportunity to escape a demon. So I'd rather be pursued by a demon, which sounds like a strange thing to say. Well, I feel like now you've got some skills too, right, being in this game. You've, maybe you know a thing a or two of how to survive a yeah. possible demon attack. Yeah, if I got the gang together again, yeah, maybe, yeah, with their help. All right, Will. Tana, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, appreciate, appreciate that. It. Thank you. Cheers.